All right, so let's get into multi-billions coming into Web3 in a very big way. Today we'll be breaking down the Epic and Disney connection. If you guys don't want to miss it, my name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, and that is Tangem. Self-custody made easy. All you have to do is go over and visit Tangem's website, get in on their self-custody wallet, which is a card-based system. Works great with their app. All you have to do is click that Get Tangem button, and it's going to give you an option on a three-card set or a two-card set. Get the three-card and of course, use our offer down below, helps us out. All right, so let's jump into this first clip, kind of gives you a rundown on the Epic Disney partnership. Listen in. And I understand you have a big announcement that you're gonna break on our air of a new strategic investment and partnership you're making? Yes. That will be for gaming and for play and for watching and even for shopping for digital goods and maybe ultimately physical goods. And this represents probably our biggest foray into the game space ever, which I think is, is not only timely, but an important step when you look at the demographic trends and you look at where Gen Alpha and Gen Z and even millennials are spending their time in media. A world where people could play games that we create, could create their own games, could watch, you can imagine the creation of short form videos, or may, we may even use the platform to actually distribute some of our content. And for us, it's a way to have skin in the game with them, with the investment of a billion five, strengthen a partnership because we have skin in the game. We have to be there, and we have to be there as soon as we possibly can in a very compelling way. All right, so several things he hit there uh, toward the end. Be there as soon as we possibly can in a very compelling way. Yes, I would agree. I think Disney is in a position right now. They've got to do something. They've selected, of course, Epic and this partnership. And this really is a metaverse play for sure. And you think about the opportunities. He mentioned even physical goods. This is going to combine a lot of the strategy around Disney's empire overall. And I think this could really play into an interesting position in the marketplace. Further into this, I want to go to another clip. This is Jim Cramer on Mattel and their position also. Because remember, all these companies that are in entertainment are vying for this next generation consumer. Listen in. We position in the company for long-term growth. I agree with you, but the stock is not going higher, which makes no sense to me. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, why doesn't the stock go up more? And I have to believe, looking at Hasbro, which is not nearly the company that you are, that people have decided that, you know what? No matter how exciting toys are, it's not the way of the future. Roblox is the way of the future. Gaming is the way of the future. I think what you've done is created an artistic powerhouse, and you're the way of the future, but I want more people to believe in what you and I say. Yeah, so Mattel, I mean, Mattel is in that position right now. A great name, but to Kramer, and I hate to agree with Kramer, but the point is, is that the digital transition that many of these entertainment brands, collectible brands, um, and what we know today is even the toy sector the digital format is the future. If you look at what has happened here recently with Roblox, this is a clip from their CEO, listen in. We've talked about NFTs and, and things that could live inside Roblox, but then get moved on to somebody else's platform or you know, so in, in other ways. There's, there's a bit of a dream here about objects and NFTs moving from platform to platform. Someday Elton John may come on Roblox and make eight or ten one unit really cool capes for example and sell them for charity and we would imagine someday that those would go off platform as an nft possibly get sold off platform and then come back on platform what we what we do expect is the creators whether it's elton john or nike or someone else making a digital item that they would play a key role and have a fair amount of control in that process so there you heard it uh, from some of the leading companies in the space right now. Disney really jockeying for a position here, understanding there is a shift. Roblox already in a very powerhouse position. Earnings came in very powerful. And of course, I think we're going to see a lot more potential upside for Roblox. So all of that. And then you look at what Meta has been able to do. There's just been so many companies that have been positioning over this last year and a half that are now playing into a very strong position. Because this is where we get into a little bit more about Disney and the ESPN partnership. 
the bundle package. How does this all play into the future of where Disney is going? Listen in. This joint venture with Warner Brothers Discovery and with Fox to create a new streaming skinny bundle. Why does it make sense to do this? Are you at all concerned that this could drive accelerated cord cutting? This is a big step in that direction. Isn't there a risk that not only it would drive accelerated cord cutting, but also put you into more conflict with the pay TV operators like Charter, who are already concerned that you were taking ESPN direct to consumer? I've not discussed this with any of those operators. And how does this all impact your negotiations with those pay TV operators? Well, I can tell you that our plan now is to bring so-called flagship to the market uh, probably uh, in, in the fall, maybe as early as late August of 2025. It is a different product. It's singular in that it is ESPN. It will have many more features and provide a much more immersive experience for the sports fan than this bundle has. This bundle is really a channel bundle. So what, what Iger is talking about there is really this transition of media going to from linear TV, which we all know is broadcast. If you look at some of the data coming off of the ARC uh, big idea uh, deck right here is a good example. U.S. TV viewership uh, share on linear versus what we've seen in streaming. And right now, this is linear TV. This is connected TV, streaming TV. And I think Iger is right. This is going to open up a lot of opportunities here for a lot of different content creators, including the big ones like what we've seen around ESPN. Now, could they, can they pull that brand out? Because it has struggled under Disney's guidance. And that will be a big question. I think the likes of Barstool and many others still control maybe the destiny to that because ESPN isn't a slam dunk in going direct to the consumer, but it is one to watch. A couple of things that I wanted to show you also in this deck if you look at social commerce, this is going to be another big factor where we do start to see a lot more integration into social commerce in all these different social media platforms. My question will be decentralized social media. How does that play into it? We've talked about that with things like Farcaster and Lens protocol. Mobile sports betting also huge. Going to be absolutely one of the biggest things out there. And when you look at, let me kind of zoom in on this right here, because this is the UN, uh, excuse me, the U.S. online sports betting volume. And if you look at this right here, the legalized versus the future legalization of where sports betting is going and what the market on online penetration has already developed, they're really just in a position right now where they're trying to meet that market. So this, again, huge business. This will play into a lot of different blockchains and a lot of different projects that we, you know, we talk about here on the show quite a bit. I want to jump over into a couple of things because this will play into what kind of chains and what kind of projects and blockchain does this potentially affect? I want to go to this next clip. This is uh, talking about ESPN as a standalone product. Listen in. We'll be offering ESPN as a standalone streaming option with innovative digital features, creating a one-stop sports destination unlike anything available in the marketplace today. Not only will consumers be able to stream their favorite live games and studio programming, They'll also have access to engaging digital integrations like ESPN Bet and Fantasy Sports, e-commerce features, and a deep array of sports stats. Likely to have some sales arm or merchandise capabilities, obviously deep dive into st stats and high degree of customization and personalization. All of these things are prepared for us to pivot as well as the world changes, as the world is disrupted. And by the way, I'd rather be a disruptor than to be disrupted. No doubt about that one. Uh, and I think to his point, you know, the potential capability of NFTs, which we've already seen huge successes in, in the sports side of things. And I think it's only scratching the surface here. Disney also is getting some distribution with things like uh, cryptoids. Let's go into that clip. So like you look at, you know, physical toys, you look at, in this case, digital toys, you look at games. Yeah. I do know what, when working with, with great licensing partners like Disney and Mattel, there's, there's a common thread that they are open-minded and interested in all these different uh, avenues, right? To reach consumers, meet them where they are and, and innovate. If you're a retail consumer product, you need to have, you know, your product sold at Walmart, you need to have your product sold at Targets, you need to have your product sold on Amazon, you need to have your product sold on Best Buy if you're an electronic product, you need distribution, you need to meet the customers where they are. Um, and the more technology uh, advances in the Web3 space that allows us to like, hey, you know, write something as a smart contract, and then allow distribution to permeate throughout the web, I think that's like, 
yeah. one of the key components of composability that a lot of people get really, really excited about. Reemphasizes why Flow is really thinking about this the right way. And, you know, Flow was built, you know, from the ground up as a, a blockchain, a layer one blockchain for consumer experiences. All right. So whether you like Flow, you don't like Flow, this is one of those tokens that gets a lot of hate, a lot of love. Depends on what you look at. If you go in and look at the sports arena around Flow, you've got NBA Top Shots, NFL All Day. You know, you can kind of see there's some significant potentials here with where this might play, especially into this next generation of fans. And now G Disney, of course, is recognizing this. They're already seeing this. This is a metaverse play for Disney, possibly connecting the kingdoms of where entertainment is going. All right, further into this, you know, if, if you remember number nine right there, Genies, that was a Bob Iger investment. So he is a believer of NFTs. And I think his, his idea of where maybe the future is going is now starting to play out with this deal with Epic. So definitely uh, going into the next level. Here, of course, is Genies right here. Could this become the avatar uh, connection into what Disney is doing, both from a metaverse play, maybe from uh, what we might see in the sports and the betting arena. There's a lot of opportunity here, I think, going forward. All right, so I wanna to go to another clip here. Of course, uh, what is Pinnacle? Pinnacle rides on flow. This is where the connection kind of comes into flow being the backbone a lot of, of about, with a lot of these NFT potential marketplaces and projects. Listen into this one. Disney Pinnacle is a brand new platform where you can collect, buy, and trade official digital Disney pins. Here you can collect and curate your dream collection of pins inside a digital pin book. You can share on social media for a chance to be featured on the app. Complete sets by gathering open edition pins available for a short time in the revolving storefront. Limited edition mystery capsules contain rare pins which can sell out quickly. Start collecting and see what's available now on Disney Pinnacle. So it's likely that this is going to be successful. This is, of course, uh, a way to look at some of the data on Disney Pinnacle on Flow, uh, active wallets, new wallets. Uh, very slow coming, you know, but of course the opportunity here for growth is pretty big, especially when you look at collectors and obviously uh, Disney kind of ties into that. Going over and cutting, cutting over to another tweet here. I got invited to Disney Pinnacle but I have an Android. This is, of course, coming out. Remember, Flow is still in beta, so the likelihood of those numbers that I just showed you. Um, did I not say Pinnacle? Oh, sorry. All right, let me do it again. All right, so another tweet here. Got invited to Disney Pinnacle, but have an Android. This is getting ready to launch, so that's another one that's an opportunity. Remember, this is still in beta, meaning Pinnacle, riding on Flow, so that goes back to that We'll see how, how popular this becomes. Some more data on uh, Flow, NFL All Day, season 2023. You can kind of see a little bit of their revenue continuing to climb. Nice moves here. And of course, uh, preseason Super Bowl, et cetera, all playing out in a pretty good position for Dapper Royalties. I want to go to another clip real quick. This one gets into um, Fast Break, which is another project we've talked about before, but listen in. My name is Jeremy Ahrens and I'm a developer for Dapper Labs. I've worked at Dapper Labs for about three years making uh, many of the products that you have seen and heard about like NBA Top Shot and NFL Day All Day and a few others that you haven't heard about. One of those is a game called Fast Break that we launched about three months ago to our community in a closed beta test. But one of the many powerful things about blockchain is we can open up this game to third parties. We can open up this game to individuals. We can open up this game to people that want to play fast break, but don't want to have an account on Top Shot. We will be pushing millions of transactions through Flow. And when we launch, we'll have 10 to 20,000 daily active users, which will make the game one of the largest games that's being played in Web3. So good signs, uh, good signs for what's happening within you know, the flow ecosystem. I think the connection to what is going on with Disney does start to paint this out to a very positive look. All right, so let's not forget Facebook had uh, NFTs available. They since have removed it. Uh, that was available on Instagram, of course. That was riding on Ethereum, Flow, and Polygon. So maybe there's something now as we start to see the advancements that uh, Zuckerberg has made with Meta, especially with their movement here recently, of coming back into the space. So that's gonna be one of those scenarios to watch uh, for sure. Let's jump over to the charts real quick. You can kind of see a little bit of a movement here with Flow, mainly because I think of this announcement from Disney right here up on the day around 8% and still climbing. So we may see a little bit of a, uh, a, a little bit of a, a movement here overall. I'm looking at the daily. 
This is something to consider. This is still a highly, I believe, a highly undervalued asset as we look at the potential for these marketplaces, these big brands kind of going in this direction. And if you look at Crypto Slam, just to give you an example, these are the titans right here. You look at those and then you look at flow, quite a bit of difference in terms of opportunity and also what the potential market could be based on all these partnerships and also based on a lot of these different platforms starting to utilize this uh, technology. So it's going to be interesting to watch. I think this is um, the beginning of what we may see coming out in the next bull run, which is utility use case that we're actually getting some groundswell activity on. And finally, some of these bigger companies that are actually doing and walking the walk in this new tech zone. So uh, definitely one to uh, keep an eye on for sure. If you guys are not in the Diamond Circle, make sure and get in now. It's another great place to join more of what we're doing here, podcasts, research, all that good stuff. Or catch me out there on X, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.